Hi, this is Odyssey Boss. Today we're gonna talk about the shadow front of the Second Civil War of the Kuomintang and Communist Party, the Spy War. And the most sensational of these is the spy case of Wu Shi and Zhu Chengzhi. This case once caused a sensation in Taiwan in the 1950s. It also prevented the plan of the People's Republic of China to attack Taiwan and silently change the situation between Taiwan and the mainland. Before the official outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War, the Communist Party of China was already planning how to seize power on the mainland. After the first civil war between the Kuomintang and the Communist Party, the Kuomintang and the Communist Party temporarily cooperated in the war against Japan. However, during the first Chinese civil war, the Communist Party learned that guerrilla warfare, incitement to rebellion, and incitement to civil unrest were quick ways to win. In the battle with Japan, the Communist Party secretly put internal spies into the Central Army and even held important positions in the army. Japan surrendered unconditionally in 1945, but the subsequent breakdown of the Chongqing negotiations led the outbreak of the Second Chinese Civil War. The spies planted by the Communist Party gradually played a role after the war started in 1947. In the Meng Liangu campaign in May 1947, Hu Lugui, the director of the 5th Department of the Ministry of Defense, who was a spy of the People's Liberation Army, secretly copied the National Army's combat deployment plans to the PLA, resulting in the annihilation of the most elite 74th Division of the NRA at that time. Before the fierce battle of Xubang in the three major battles, Gu Lugui and Zhang Keqia launched a series of conspiracy and counterattacks, which caused the army to have low morale and made Zhang Kai-shek make a wrong judgment, which allowed the PLA to break through the defense of the Yellow River. As a commander of Xuzhou City Defense, Zhang Keqia took the 59th and 77th Corps to surrender to the PLA, which caused the Xuzhou defense to collapse and was captured by the PLA in November 1948. In the later defense of Chongqing in November 1949, Gu Lugui even transferred the new 34th Division from the defense area, allowing the PLA to drive directly into Chongqing. Gu Lugui also used his garrison commander to command the counties in the southern Sichuan. The county magistrate kept the archive properly, which made the PLA hand over the territory very smooth. And then Gu Lugui led the 72nd Army to surrender to the Communist Party in Yiping. In 1950, the NRA also withdrew from Hainan Island, the territory owned by the government of the ROC are only Taiwan, Penghu, Jinmen, and Mazu. The PLA was very excited and prepared to attack Taiwan in one fell swoop, completely wipe out the remaining force of the ROC government. At this time, the PLA spies also secretly established a perfect spy network inside Taiwan, extending the tentacles of the spy to all parts of Taiwan. They also plan to instigate and right internally when the PLA attacks Taiwan and absorb the high-ranking officers in national armies to surrender when the invasion takes place. At the center of this shadow is the protagonist of our story, Cai Xiaoqian. Mao Zedong and Su Yu, the supreme commander of the PLA, initially planned to attack Taiwan at the end of 1950. In addition to sufficient armament, attacking Taiwan also required the assistance of spy agents who are lurking on the island. Since the Second Civil War, the missions of these agents have been to provoke social unrest and organize riots in cities, and to absorb high-ranking officers to bring their troops into the PLA. So the defense of the National Army will be weakened from the inside. The spy network lurking in Taiwan will be traced back to April 1946, when the People's Liberation Army established the Chinese Communist Party Taiwan Provincial Working Committee in China, with the gradual withdrawal of the National Army to Taiwan in 1949. Many spies of the PLA were also in the mix. The best agent among them was Cai Xiaoqian. Cai Xiaoqian was the leader of the PLA spy organization in Taiwan. He was born in Taiwan under Japanese rule in 1908 and grew up here. In 1920, the young Cai Xiaoqian left Taiwan and came to Shanghai to study. When he was away from home, he met the Communist Party organization on campus and was recruited as one of them. Because he was fluent in Japanese and had an excellent writing skill, he would soon serve as a political propaganda officer of the PLA. By the time of the Second Sino-Japanese War, he had become a member of the military who interrogated and persuaded Japanese soldiers to surrender. He was also able to translate and analyze Japanese military documents. Later, the PLA even asked him to write internal textbooks to train new spy agents. In 1946, shortly after Japan officially surrendered, Cai Xiaoqian returned to Shanghai again. He had a brand new mission that was to come to Taiwan to become the leader of the spy organization of PLA. In July 1946, he returned to his hometown with a new undercover identity. With his original background, he and other agents quickly integrated into local life. 
Soon after Cai Xiaocheng came to Taiwan, he recruited seven locals to join the spy team. In 1948, the members of the spy organization came to 285. In 1949, during the Chinese Civil War period, the spy organization of the People's Liberation Army developed rapidly. In December 1949, he controlled as many as 1,300 underground intelligence officers, as well as 50,000 informants under his hands. These informants did not know that the organization was controlled by communist forces, but because of their anger toward the national government, they were provoked by secret agents. These people could be used to strike, protest, march, and instigate riots at any time. Cai Xiaoqian told the Feng Shui army that his secret troops were ready. Before the PLA landing, he could instigate social unrests and topple the ROC government, controlled by Chiang Kai-shek. At this time, a senior agent also came to Taipei from Nanjing. He was the deputy commander of the 16th Army Group, Lieutenant General Wu Shi. Cai Xiaoqian and Wu Shi gained contact in private with Wu Shi's work in Ministry of Defense staff headquarters, many highly confidential strategy information was leaked to Cai Xiaoqian and then transferred to the PLA. This included multiple military maps, which marked the beaches where Taiwan could be landed, available troop unloading points, and the location of Taiwan's military bases. In addition, there was information of troop configuration in Kingman and Zhoushan Islands, and the artillery battery positions of the fort. These documents were brought to China through a female agent named Zhu Chengzhi. It caused significant damage to the NRA's defense of the Kingman and the Taiwan Strait. At this moment, the organization had planned to extend its claws and prepare to cooperate with the PLA to win in Taiwan. Cai Xiaoqian also suggested that the attack plan should be launched in April 1950 because weather at that time was most suitable for amphibious landing operations. In the fall of 1949, Chiang Kai-shek withdrew his troops to Taiwan after China experienced the collapse of the intelligence system and the incitement of betrayal of many important troops. He was determined to eradicate the spy organization of the PLA lurking in Taiwan. However, he must rush to complete the internal cleanup of the NRA before the PLA crosses the Sea of Taiwan to avoid internal turmoil and the absorption of more senior members of the National Army by the Communist Party. So he took counterintelligence work at the top priority of the interim government and ordered the Ministry of Defense Secret Service to carry out the search and arrest mission. There was a major breakthrough in espionage and arrest work in September 1949. At that time, president of Keelong High School, Zhong Haodong, turned to the Communist Party because of disappointment with the national government and established the Keelong High School Branch Committee of the Communist Party of China. Later, he further formed the Jidong City Work Committee in Taiwan. Founded in 1948, the newspaper Bonming Bao criticized Chiang Kai-shek for leading the national government and promoting social ideas. At that time, the newspaper Bombing Bao was spread all over Taiwan. The Secret Service of the Ministry of Defense did its best, but it could not find any relevant clues of the origin of the Bombing Bao, and therefore Bombing Bao was circulating in Taiwan. But not long after, the source of the Bombing Bao was leaked due to a negligence by Wang Mingde, a member of the branch of the Law School of National Taiwan University. By the way, Wang Mingde was also Wang Shijian's father. He was pursuing a woman. In order to impress the woman that he was pursuing, he claimed that he was part participating in an underground organization and showed the woman the Guangling Bao newspaper. But she placed the newspaper randomly at home and was found by her family. Her family immediately called the police to arrest Wang Mingde. Oh, the anti-spy organizations of the national government disintegrated the branch of the underground organizations of Chengong High School and National Taiwan University Law School, which caused the exposure of the Kilong High School underground branch was found. The Gong Bao newspaper was published by the president of Kilong High School, Zhong Haodong. He was also exposed. So the anti-spy organizations from the government entered the Kilong High School in the early hours of August 15 and arrested more than 40 people. Zhong Haodong then was executed. The anti-spy agents used the information gathered by the arrested people to target Cai Xiaoqian's organization. Soon after, a senior agent in charge of espionage in the southern Taiwan was arrested in Kaohsiung in November. As the secret agent Li arrested and surrendered, more and more organization strongholds and related personnel were arrested. Cai Xiaoqian's spy organization collapsed in a sudden, and he himself became the next target of the secret service. The anti-spy personnel from the national government were slowly approaching him. 
In January 1950, hometown counterintelligence personnel discovered Cai Xiaoqian's address in Taipei, and secret agents rushed into his home to arrest him. However, Cai Xiaoqian calmly faced this sudden change and fake surrendered and immediately fled under the carelessness of the police officer. In the cold winter, Cai Xiaoqian played cat and mouse with the secret service personnel, but a few weeks later, he was still captured in the farmland of his hometown, Zhanghua. At this time, Cai Xiaoqian nearly lost the organization he once founded, collapsed. His men were arrested and his family members left. He was arrested again without resistance. However, he still had one young female agent who he had romantic interest in order to save this young female agent. He was willing to change sides and cooperate with the nationalist government. Therefore, on March 1st, 1950, the situation on both sides of the Taiwan Strait ushered in a drastic change. In this change, Cai Xiaoqian became a national army officer and received a general reward. The female spy was also released. Correspondingly, Cai Xiaoqian handed over the list of some of the best communist spy agents in Taiwan at that time. On March 2nd, Wu Shi, Zhu Chengzhi, Chen Baochang, Nie Xi, and Wang Zhengjun were arrested and executed. Wu Hei, Fang Kehua, Jiang Aixun, Wang Jifu were sentenced. Cai Xiaoqian also reported all the remaining communist strongholds and underground bases and made the Ministry of Defense Secret Service to conduct a search throughout all Taiwan. All the PLA spies in Taiwan and Taiwan Strait were arrested, so the main communist spy organization was eradicated from Taiwan and ended a crucial spy war. Wu Shi, Zhu Chengzhi, and others were shot and executed in grounds of Ma Changbing, Guanghua District, Taipei City. At this time, Mao Zedong and Su Yu did not know what happened in Taiwan until June 1950, the government of the ROC published the search results on the front page of the newspaper. The newspaper also published of Wu Shi and Zhu Chengzhi before and after the execution in Taipei. Only then, Mao Zedong and Su Yu know that their spy organization has been eradicated. With the disintegration of spy networks, the PLA plans to attack Taiwan was hampered. At this time, when the Korean War broke out, the US military reassisted the government of ROC, and the PLA was unable to capture Taiwan. This caused a stalemate between two sides of the Taiwan Strait till today. However, some of the ideals of socialist and communist thinkings infiltrated Taiwan, which also affected Taiwan's future situation and development. The espionage war between the two sides of Taiwan Strait has not stopped. After that, many spies also worked between two sides, making unknown plans in the shadows. In 2013, the government of the People's Republic of China established the Unknown Hero Squares to commemorate the secret agents who died in Taiwan. A statue of four people was erected in front of the monument of the unknown soldiers. From south to north are Chen Baochang, Zhu Chengzhi, Wu Shi, Nie Xi. Cai Xiaoqian remained in Taiwan afterwards, where he served as a major general in the Ministry of Defense and was responsible for writing, research, and analyzing spy activities. In October 1982, Cai Xiaoqian died of illness in Taipei at the age of 74. So that's it. This was the story of the fiercest espionage war between the two sides of Taiwan Strait in 1950. Today's content mainly refers to the book The Chinese Invading Threat, Taiwan's Defense and American Strategy in Asia, published by Yan Liu. The author is Ian Easton, a researcher at the Project 2049 Institute of the Washington Think Tank. Hey, do you like our content? If you like them, please remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you want to support us, feel free to donate from the link below.